South Korean Marines in exercises close to the North Korean border. This in response to offensive activity by Pyongyang forces in the area. We will see a horrible loss of human life. Probably 300 to 400,000 in the first week, civilian and military, probably over 2 million by the time three weeks is up. If I'm a North Korean commander, I will unleash the firepower of my artillery and inflict as much death and destruction on the South as I can. And in the first hours, there will literally be hundreds of thousands of artillery rounds and rockets fired to the South, and many of them into Seoul. With their reserve forces of some six million, I think they're the fourth largest army in the world. The scenarios that could lead to war is when Kim Jong-un believes he is threatened. And this can be an external threat by a preemptive strike from the United States, by a miscalculation of alliance military moves where he thinks the regime is subject to extreme threat. Our task will be to use air power to hold those guys off as much as we can until we can get heavier stuff in there. The first thing you gotta do is to get all your stuff combat loaded on ships. Tanks, trucks, armor, artillery, infantry, all the stuff that goes with that. And that will take anywhere from three or four days for the U.S. Marine Corps guys coming in out of Japan to almost three weeks for the heavy tanks to come in all the way from Texas. The North Koreans have about two to three weeks of stocks, ammunition, food, fuel, etc., to fight a war. That's all they got. So their war plan has to include accomplishing all of the goals that they have within that short time frame, because after that, they're living off the land. As the war starts to go bad for them, most units will start to collapse. Once their army starts to collapse, it's going to be a very, very rapid de-escalation of uh, conflict. When they know that, then what reason do they have not to use the nukes and take out several hundred thousand Americans with them? As officials say, a possible new ICBM launch by the North could be on a trajectory deeper into the Pacific, more threatening to the U.S. and regional neighbors. If North Korea follows this path, it will not have a bright future. This is a message that should be sent to North Korea to make it change its ways. This only adding urgency for the U.S. military to deploy THAAD anti-missile launchers south of Seoul. There were some protests. China sees it as a threat. For South Korea, it is a necessity. Southern. We are deploying the THAAD in response to North Korea's nuclear and missile threats. In Pyongyang, there were orchestrated celebrations honoring the scientists behind the recent nuclear test. The Wall Street Journal reporting foreign-trained North Koreans could be key to the nuclear and missile programs. As President of the United States, would you tolerate a nuclearized North Korea that is contained and deterred, but still nuclear? Or would it have to abandon nuclear weapons? And would military action on the part of the United States be one of the options necessary to achieve that goal? Military action would certainly be an option. You've got uh, South Koreans caught in the middle on one side, listening to President Trump on the other side, watching Kim Jong-un and watching a possible missile launch, maybe as early tomorrow, of an ICBM. Again, that could come at Saturday Korean time, and it could be a flatter trajectory launch that would put it deeper into the Pacific, more threatening to the United States. But it could come earlier, or it could come later, or maybe next month. That's the hitch with Kim Jong-un. You're never too sure what he's going to do, because he likes to keep his neighbors, the world, guessing. And on high alert here in South Korea, the military at least seems to be on wartime footing. The South Korean forces wrapping up exercises that we've been tracking all this week following last weekend's nuclear test by North Korea. There are more, we are told, next week involving the U.S. Marines. Finally, a protest in Seoul here, blasting Kim Jong-un, appearing to praise President Trump. 
Uh, the president's strong rhetoric unsettles some here, but others like it precisely because it unsettles the North. We've had presidents for 25 years now. They've been talking, 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 and the day after an agreement is reached, uh, new work begins in North Korea, continuation on nuclear. So uh, I would prefer not going the route of the military, but it's something certainly that could happen. Our military has never been stronger. Uh, we are in a position now, and you know the new orders. You see the numbers just like I see the new numbers. It's been uh, tens of billions of dollars more in investment. And each day, new equipment is delivered, new and beautiful equipment, the best in the world, the best anywhere in the world, by far. Uh, hopefully, we're not going to have to use it on North Korea. If we do use it on North Korea, it will be a very sad day for North Korea. Do you have a question for the Amir? Follow up. Is it, is it acceptable for you as president for North Korea to be nuclearized but contained and deterred? Is that a strategy? We're going to see what it is. I don't would negotiate like to with you. No, I'm not negotiating with you. Maybe we'll have a chance to negotiate with somebody else, but uh, I don't put my negotiations on the table, unlike past administrations. I don't talk about them. But I can tell you that North Korea is behaving badly, and it's got to stop.